Hello Universe! Well, here we are on part 6 now. Uh, today it's uh, Boxing Day, 26th of December uh, 2014. It's about um, half past 5 in the afternoon here in the UK. And um, I want to bid you all uh, a Merry Christmas. That has to be the first and foremost thing. So, Merry Christmas. Hope Santa brought you all that you want. And uh, yeah, cool. Fantastic. Right. Now, part 5, we finished off here on this one, R set, set R36, so we're starting today with R37, RS37, sorry. Right, here we go then, let's have a look. Oh yes, this is great because it's the time and period in trying where things started to get more colourful and uh, and certainly more locomotives again. Now there's going to be, uh, I think I'm going to do 11 or 12 sets today because that, that will then leave one more part to finish it all, uh, for, for book one that is. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, not only, like I said, is it more colourful but you're going to see lots and lots more locomotives now today as well that you've never seen before. And this is a cracker to start with. I mean, RS37 the Frontiersman this is the set that I absolutely adored when it came out and as you can see it's got the Davy Crockett loco with its uh, twin bogey tender and then you've got two of the lined um, old time coaches R446 so um, yeah I've got this on the layout ready so I'm going to go and go for it alrighty oh there she is the Davy Crockett loco this was one that I couldn't wait to get my hands on when it first appeared in the catalogue back there in the 60s, I think this was 63 this one was released with the two coaches R446, I think that's right yeah and you'll notice these I've got the black lining on them uh, like shown in the photo on the website they actually did do them without the lining and I don't think they look anywhere near as good um, I've got five of these coaches, there's no point in putting any more on because I'm trying to recreate the set so that would spoil it but um, you'll notice that it has got the chimney and they almost certainly are missing uh, four of mine have the chimneys and the other well, last one doesn't so that's pretty good going though to, to say and, and of course they're in immaculate condition so yeah come on do you want to see a run yes of course you do right whoops oh it's lovely it's a real corker this one is yeah what you come through Oh yeah, don't you just love it? Wicked! And again. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Down a bit. Yeah, cool. Right, well. You've seen her run, obviously we'll have it running again in a little while. So let's just slow it down. Slow down, girls, slow down. Right, there's fine. So uh, stay with me. We'll go and have a look what the next one is. Obviously it's going to be R30, RS38, but we're going to check it out. Okay, back in a tick. Okay, let's go back. Next one, RS38, here. Oh, again, another complete change now from Triang um, RS38, the Snow Rescue Train. So yeah, here we go then. It was introduced in '63, which I thought it was, yes. And it's the first time we see the proper. Now, when I say proper, that's not necessarily the right term, but you'll see we've got the red dock center now. But this time, although it's got the TR shield, which stands for Triang Railways, obviously, um, it's actually got the number TR27001, something like that. Anyway, uh, and so it's this was generally made for the uh, uh, the uh, transcontinental series. It, it was produced for that purpose. And of course, now we see for the first time here the helicopter wagon R128. Now you'll note it says NATO on it there, at the bottom, under the helicopter. Um, now I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. And then of course we've now got the ambulance car, R248. So again, all new items and the real cracking 138, the snow plough, which is brilliant. So uh, let me go and put this out now. 
before we move on with the RS-38, there was something I meant to tell you at the beginning and I actually forgot. Right, if you saw part 5, you'll probably remember that I mentioned I think it's about time I clean my tracks. I haven't actually done them for about 2 or 3 months, which is a bit naughty really. Um, because out of all the locomotives I run, which I think was probably about 10, um, 4 of them were having small problems and I was very sure it was the track was causing the issues more than anything. Um, and so what I did, I did obviously clean it all before I started running this part 6. But um, I've kept something to show you. I'll just move down here and um, you'll see here, look. Now, I've got quite a few of the try and clack, track, clack, <laughs> track cleaning cars. Um, now these pads are all brand new ones, never used before. And as you can see, I used a separate one for each of the three main lines. And there's the result. Now, um, obviously that they definitely needed doing now if you saw my video a long time ago about the ultimate track cleaning setup which um, I quite think is a good idea what I did I'm using the Dapol track cleaning fluid and as I said at the time I was not impressed with this because it says that it dries up but it doesn't dry up it, it, it stays wet for a long time so after I've cleaned the tracks I then put a fourth one on the back and run it round with a dry pad just to wipe off the surplus like that and um, yep that's all came off the three tracks wow come on then RS38 into the frame here it comes yes don't you just love it yes there we go there she is like I said here TR20071 I think I said the number right and uh, that then is the first time we see uh, I know we saw the yellow one in the last two parts but uh, that said Tron Railways on it and as I say this one's got the proper TR number now and uh, it's the red continental one it's got the buffer holes as well and some of them did and some of them didn't so like I said before that's usually a bit hit and miss but here we go with the snow player I have featured this before some time ago um, but uh, it's part of the set here of course and there you'll see chimneys still in existence and the, the flaps here, they, they open up, they're fine, they work fine for the loco and like I say this is the first time now we see the helicopter wagon and there it is now I pointed out to you that um, the one on the uh, website has got the word NATO on and you'll see there's no writing on this one at all um, and to me that would be right because at this point in time we hadn't seen any NATO items yet uh, let alone battle space so there's no sort of writing on that so that to me would be correct and then we've got the, the first time we see the release of the ambulance car so there it is set RS38 cool well I know you're going to want to see it go so let's just deal with it there she goes around for you a couple of times <clears throat> bloody marvellous yes superb we're going to get them all going in a bit obviously uh, I'll get all three lines set up first and then we'll put them together as always so let's just bring it to the front There we go, that'll do, and you'll say you'll see them all running in a short while. Let's move on then, uh, RS38, I don't think there was a 39 and 40, so let me go and check that now, back shortly. Right, RS38 here, um, like I said, I didn't think there was, <coughs> 39 and 40, so it's straight to 41 here, look. Ah, right now, RS41 set, now try and generally did um, feature the clockwork sets and the starter sets uh, under a separate category sort of thing uh, but this time here you'll see that they've actually included it in the RS numbering system RS41 and as you can see so basically the RPA set uh, with Super 4 track so RPA set is identical to this and it is the, the clockwork sort of starter set um, but uh, with series 3 track in it so we're not bothered about the track so there we have it now interesting thing here is the saddle tank loco here is in green, well, part green and black, and this was never done as an electric loco. Yes, the black one was, because you saw that a couple of, uh, <coughs> part two, I think, I'm trying to remember everything, but yeah, um, 
but like I said the green one was only any of you uses the uh, clockwork one uh, which makes it pretty rare now also you look at the coaches here they are really really cheap tack and I mean that sincerely they are so light there's no weights in them there's no glazing no interior and there's no buffers no bumpers as you can oh no I'm telling lies they are, I think they are on that one yes they are sorry forget that one didn't spot that one there yeah it has got the buffers on they have got the buffers on them right um, now I have actually got the RPA set um, so what I might as well do while we're here I might as well run this one now because like I said it is the same apart from the track we'll run it now and um, and then obviously when I do the starter sets we'll just skip it there's no point in doing it twice so stay with me please yeah, um, and still uh, in my bedroom stroke office, um, just for the moment, I, th I thought I'd like to show you this. This is like the RPA set look. I mean, yeah, I mean, look at it. Uh, and I'll show you something else as well. Just gonna carefully get the lid off. Now, I'm not going to undo the track. This is Series 3 track, which I've just explained to you, so I'm not interested in that. Uh, I got this set at a good price, and you'll notice that there's a, one of the coaches there. And like I say, they're very, uh, they're very cheap tag. There's a starter set, very, very, very light, no weight in them at all. Um, now there's two coaches comes with the set, but when I bought this, it actually had three coaches in it, which is a, a little bit of a bonus. And you'll see here, if I carefully lift this up and show it to you, see there that that's the original clockwork chassis from this set, and the, the levers for stop, start, forward, and reverse. Uh, that's the clockwork chassis and it's absolutely perfect and I'm trying to put it down again it's absolutely perfect and I've got the key with it as well uh, but I've taken it out of the uh, body and uh, I'll show you in a minute why all right then are you ready for this you wait till you see the condition of this logo this is like mint the date was made There you go guys, check that out, look at that, it's absolutely spotless, perfect decals, the green and black saddle tank. Now what I've done is I've, uh, as I've just shown you the clockwork assembly, I've obviously put the body onto an electric chassis so I can run it like this. I've not actually screwed the body on because the mounting screws at the back on these, I'll try and show you, you can probably see it, it's there at the back. Now, <coughs> I'm going to give you a bit of information here guys, if you've got any of the old saddle tanks or the old uh, diesel shunters, the OH shunters from Triang, they won't run on modern track, well I say they won't, the very early ones won't with the solid cast wheel, but what I've done here, I've, I've bought a couple of Jinties, scruffy ones, hang on, let me turn it off because it's humming. I bought a couple of Jinties, scruffy ones, and I wasn't bothered about the body, and you'll see there that the wheels, they're see-through. You should be able to see that, they're see-through, and they've also got the tyre on them, it's not one solid cast wheel. And 90% of the time, if you when you if you buy yourself a Jinty with the, with the, the view to be, be converting it, and to, to, to something like this, a saddle tank, or improve your old 060, blah, 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 um, then the thing to go for is this one with the see-through wheels and, and, and the sintered tyres on it. Uh, don't buy the solid wheel ones because you're back to where you started. So there we go. Now, to the two coaches. And there they are. As I say, I got three with this set, so that was a, a little bonus. And there they are. Now I have actually glazed them because I just think it looks a bit better <coughs> with some glazing in. And I'm going to tell you another little trick that I do here is you can see there, look, it looks slightly frosted. I think it looks quite cool. Um, what I use, I mean everybody to their own obviously, but what I use for putting glazing in coaches that don't have it is uh, my mum's medication blister packs the lid. It's perfect, it's not too stiff, it's not too thick, and it makes a perfect job of glazing them. So pop into your local chemist and ask you if you can pinch a couple of their blister packs. Empty, obviously, and it works great. It does really do the job fine. So, yeah, come on, we've got to get around and we're ready. So, whoops, quick there, John. Now, those coaches are rattling a bit on the sleeper grips of the modern track. And quite simply, because this is the genuine RPA set, and it was intended to be on Series 3 track. 
when they changed it to RS41 with the new Super 4 track, well then, obviously the wheels must have got changed on the coaches. So it's not that bad at all, on it. Good enough. Oh yeah, sorry, I did forget something else as well. I was talking to you about the, uh, not haven't screwed the body on yet, and the reason for that is because on the jinky body, uh, yeah, on the, yeah, on the jinky body, right, stop it here. On the jinty body, the screw is on the side with these later chassis and the uh, see-through wheels, whereas, like I showed you on this, it's on the back. But it's not a problem. I've just got to mark it out and uh, drill drill a little hole in the back of the chassis and uh, tap it with a, uh, a BA. Uh, 8BA tap and then put the screw up. So there it is then. So that's a RS41 or RPA set, whichever you want to call it. Right, we'll get them all running shortly. Yeah, and uh, just to be different, that would be an uh, idea to uh, start off standing up. You know, spend a lot of time on the bloody knees to do this. So I stand up and uh, do some of the long shots of the layout with them all running. Lovely. Great. Stiffing. That was good. Quite close together there. So guys, where are we? Uh, David Crockett is an RS37 uh, is Frontiersman and the Snowflower Rescue set there is 30 RS38 and then of course on the outside line here Coming around again in a minute. Here it comes. RS41. Electrified. <laughs> Instead of being clockwork. Great. Right, I'll fade it. Again, just trying to do this sort of different things. So I'll fade it. No, then I'll bring them to a stop. I'll tell you something. Hang on. I'm on the damn knees again. Right, what are we going to get first? Maybe truck it, maybe? Yeah, that would be bad, yes. Yes, okay. Maybe a socket. Okay, let's get the uh, to the yard switcher. Where is she? Police comes. Oops, we click there, John. And blot it out there, never mind. Okay, RS38 set. And last up, RS41 or RPA as it was previously known here we go that's it that's all of them there and what I've decided to do um, in the past what I have been doing I've been moving like uh, one set across to the next line and moving that set across and then put, bringing one new item out on the outside track here um, which is fine obviously uh, but I think it might be better if I just clear all three off now and do the same as I did at the beginning of this one and get all three prepared up front um, and like that it will shorten the videos a little bit as well but you'll still get a chance to have everything running so why not I'm going to do that make a start on it right now Back we go once more to here and we're on RS42 then straight to here ah right again uh, this was as it says here similar sort of thing happened here uh, RS set 42 is obviously the later numbering system and as you can see here it says basically the RPE set with Super 4 track so that's more or less the same thing as what we've just done although it is different uh, in the sense that it's the first time we see the little industrial loco which is basically the, the body shell of Nelly and Connie, Polly, whatever uh, but it's in black and it's got two, they call them mineral wagons here and then just like a, a, a normal 10 ton wagon there now um, you can see on the side there I can't quite weigh up whether that's been deliberately done for this picture or not because I, I always, always 
how do I put this? I was always under the impression that this did have a decal on the side of it, yet it's not on that one. So whether it's come off or whatever, I don't really know. So, uh, right, we might as well just go and get this one on the layout ready. Let's do it. Okay, and here we have her then, uh, set RS42. First time we see the little 040 industrial shunter. Um, and as you can see, it has got the decal on the side on that one, slight nick out the top of it. But it's other than that, she's in great nick. And then the two cheap starter set mineral wagons, exactly like in the uh, photo. And, uh, and then a normal wagon on the end. Now, I will point out to you, um, I do have the plain green one and the plain brown one. But I do know the right at the bottom of the box, so I put the insul fish one on. It's white. It's the same van, but it's just got insul fish written on it, and it's uh, in white, so it's no big deal. I'm not going to take them all just to get hold of that brown one or green one. So right, let's see if she's going to run. All right, Hang on. have a go. Whoops. Oh yeah, running all right. That's for sure. <laughs> Yep, kiddies starter set, electric one, how it looks, and it's day. There we go, bring around to the front again. Better speed there, right? oh, left the control, oh, never mind, wrong one. Another one swam won't matter. Here we go. Little industrial tank. Let's check what the next one is. Right. Back we go again. RS42. Okay, RS43. Ah, there we go again. Ah, now. Uh, this is the, yeah. This one wasn't uh, um, put under the other category like the last two have been done. Um, this is obviously is RS43 and it's plain and simple. As you can see there, there's absolutely nothing to it. Um, simply clockwork uh, O4, o diesel shunter in red. Uh, simple was it seven plank open wagon and that famous brown guards van, short wheelbase one again. So uh, let's see if we can deal all this out. And yet again, here we are with RS43, there's the loco, now again, uh, like I've been saying throughout this uh, series of videos, I'm not into clockwork, so basically it's the right body shell, and I've just uh, motorised it with an electric chassis. And then quite simply the open wagon there, coal wagon, and then that famous guard van, so I was actually a bit sceptical whether this would run on uh, modern tracks, but she does seem to be handling it. Alright, so yeah. Another kiddie starts to set. Yeah, she's running well on that track there. Not even stuck in on the point. That's good. Pretty smart. Right, that's the second one here now then. So, bring it to the front as always. Yeah, definitely running all right on that track. Yep, so there's two of them then, uh, what say, 42, RS42 and RS43, so 44, coming up, let's go and have a look. Dooby dooby doo, back we go again, alright, 43, oh I know what the, yes, I know what this one is, right, yes, RS44, the Picador, this is a great little set, now I'll tell you, this is the um, uh, SNCF uh, Pereri tank, uh, she's a 262, um, you've not seen her yet, this is the first time she ever appeared in the Triang listings. You've seen the gondola and you've seen the uh, hopper here, but you've never seen this before and it's actually quite rare because it was only ever produced for this set uh, in 1963, the Continental Prairie with three freight cars and this um, SNCF guards van or Forgon as it's called is pretty rare. Now I have got it, I've got one in mint condition, but I actually must admit I can't remember where it is, but I'm going to have to have a look for it and uh, well I'll just have a bit of a break now anyway and go and see if we can get this lot together as well. And so we have the Picador set, RS44, there's the SNCF 262 Prairie Tank, there, gorgeous. 
Uh, I will point out that they did do a, uh, a Twin Hunt version of this, though it never featured any sets, but I'll tell you about that um, later on in the next part. Yep, and then they've got the gondola and the bulk cement. Sorry, I called that a hopper, I meant bulk cement, my mistake, sorry. And then the super rare Forgon, that one is like, well, it's brand new, so it's obviously it's in perfect condition. So that's it, the Picador set. Uh, and I will point out to you again here, as I did earlier, if you check out those wheels, they are the see-through wheels again, with the uh, tired flange on them. And it will just about, like I said to you earlier, you can get about 90 to 95% that are okay on modern track. They sometimes just tendency to stick slightly on the points, but um, you can live with it. See what I mean? No. It was fine that time. So running on Pico track here with this. Remember this is a 1963 locomotive. Slightly on that one. And I haven't changed the wheel, that's how it came. Like I said, you've got to make sure you don't buy the ones which have got the solid cast wheels. They are always a problem on the modern track. Alright, we'll just get it all going I think. Whoops. Just click there, sorry. <laughs> Okay, let's just do it. Ooh. Yep, that's uh, 42, 43 and 44. Great! That's a little industrial tank. Oh, she's here, look. There she is. <laughs> yeah, real cheap, those two mineral wagons are. Like I just say, start the stuff for the kids. Both those two. Not so much for picking on, though. That's a, certainly a more serious one. Lovely, lovely, eh? Really nice. Oh, but it's decent speed as well. I'm just getting over here. Oh, sorry, guys. My shot's from over here. Here they come. I do just love it. Brill. Bloody Brill. Well, we're up to RS44. That's uh, six sets so far. Another five or six to go. What we got first? That one? Yeah. I think it all set. Cool. Little industrial tank. RS42. I believe we have 42. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? 42, 42, 42. Yeah, that's right. There you go then. 42, 43, 44, all together. We're moving on fast now, guys. We're moving on. Mm, I can't for life and remember what's coming up next. Let's have, let's have a simple look. Come on, it's easy. Where are we? 43 there, 44 we've just done, and RS45, oh yes! I've been looking to do this, looking forward to doing this one, yes! RS45, the mailman set. Now, I always found this set rather strange. Um, yes, we've got the uh, uh, Mark II baggage coach in red and silver. Uh, we've got this transcontinental operating uh, post office um, wagon, car, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the first time you've seen this as well. It was new to this set, um, and then we've got this uh, R257 if I'm right, yeah I was right, R257, the two-tone green one. I don't, 
I never followed why they would have used a two-tone green one in there when, rather than just the red and silver one. I really don't. But I'm glad they did because I love that loco. And I've got it. In fact, I've got all of this. So uh, back soon. Hi everybody, uh, welcome back and the reason I say that is because it's now day two, it's the 27th of December today and I gave it a bit of a break last night so back on it now and before we bring in RS, uh, set RS45 uh, I've got to just tell you I did a really stupid thing yesterday uh, the last loco that we've just seen going around with the Picador set um, and it's got the foregone brake band on the end I put the brake band on the wrong way around I couldn't believe it, I didn't see it until I edited it all to the computer and I wasn't going to uh, rerun re it all again, it wasn't worth it but it's got red lights on the back and I put it on the wrong way so what a twat okay then come on RS45 here we go here she comes I absolutely adore this loco I absolutely love her so there she is um, I'm sure you can see the condition I don't think I need to say anything about it Yep, she's lovely. Our 257, the two turn green one, pretty rare. That mm -hmm. one. And uh, like I said in on the introduction when I was looking at the computer for the uh, next set to come up, and um, it features the uh, Mark II Transcontinental silver and red baggage car, and then the uh, Transcontinental mail coach there. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether they look better the other way around or not. I don't really know. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. We'll get her running round. I still think it's a bit of a strange set. It's called the Mailman. Beautiful triangle bogey again. Always perfect. There we go. Bring her to a roundabout here. Right, and so, as I always say, we'll have the morning running in a little while. So uh, RS45, let's go and see what the next one is. Right, next up, one would expect RS46. Oh no, no, that's another one we've got a gap here. So we're on to RS47. Uh, oh, now this is an interesting one because it's uh, it's the double set. It was the only one, as far as I can remember, that they ever did under the Triang name. This, so this would have been quite expensive in its day. Um, it features the L1. Uh, and the two BR coaches, 626 and 627, which we, you saw a bit earlier uh, in this video. I think this one, no, last video, sorry. Uh, and then it's got Connie. This is the first time we see Connie. Now, I have seen it come with Nelly, uh, not Nelly, sorry, uh, Polly uh, as well. So it could, could be a little bit hit and miss on that. But uh, I've got both of these, so uh, it's the first time we're going to see the L1. And it's the first time we're going to see uh, little Connie. So go and do it right now. Right, here we go then with my L1. Um, physically she's fine, as you can see, um, but the uh, the boiler bands need a little bit of a touch-up, but uh, that's that's all, no, not a big deal. Um, yeah, now I'll point out to you here that this is a um, one of the later ones uh, that they did, um, still from the 60s obviously, uh, and it's got see-through wheels, which is a good sign that she will run on modern track and she does but it is one of those situations where she's really really right on borderline and there is some hesitation sometimes on the points so uh, if she does stutter a bit then I'm going to have to live with it uh, for now not much else I can do about it um, yeah so we'll just take her along we've seen these coaches anyway they are 626, if I remember my numbers right yeah get around as I say she might stutter on this point what will be will be yeah tiny little bit look yep yeah. yeah just a bit okay oh let's move her out of the way let's move her out of the way get her over here yeah, that'll do for now. Um, well, I've got the well, one going that way and I'm going that way, so I now think I need to go that way again. Yep, and here we go. The second part of RS47. Little Polly! <laughs> um, again, uh, like 
quite a few of my locomotives um, I tend to buy them cheaper if they've got some uh, decal damage which can be repaired as long as they're physically okay and the same thing applies there I put new names on it didn't actually make quite as good a job of it perhaps I should have done but I can all do it again I've got plenty of spares so there we go that's the shall we call this uh, RS47B and the L1 being the, the A section so yeah we'll just get it all running then let's just go for it right Polly first come on girl come on Oh, she's stuck a bit left. <laughs> Come on, darling. Yeah, that's better. Right, uh, L1. And we we'll keep her. Oh, at a reasonable speed to try and avoid that to those point issues okay forty five there we go so we've got the RS forty five and uh, RS 47A and B. Oh, yeah. Look, it's got a back on. You could do a slowing Connie down a little bit. That's yeah, better. Don't want to overkill that one with the speed. Hmm. She's cute though. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not sure actually I haven't seen the wheels on the old one and I'm not doing it today, it's pretty like that. So it may actually just be a little bit to do with the wheels might be cleaning. But so, you know, she runs okay on the rest of the track. So maybe just a bit of crap there. There you go then Gary, so bring them to a halt and we'll move on. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Okay, let's get uh, the L1. Let's come back round. Yes. Oops. A little poly. Thunderbar. There you go. Let's see what the next one is. Now we're here at RS48. Now this is a, a set that I don't think it's worth running because it uh, features Lord of the Isles with just two of the clustery roof coaches, the uh, composite and the brake. Now the, the thing is, um, she was featured in the last video, was it? Number five, maybe number four, uh, with, with three coaches. Um, so it's, there's no point in running this one because you've already seen it run uh, with, with an extra coach. So I don't see a lot of point in doing it. So let's just check out what's next. Right, where are we? 49, I've lost the mouse. What's the right RS49? Oh, now I know what this is. Yes, I know what this one is. Right, this is a, another starter set. Uh, it's a clockwork one again, um, and it's got the what they call the top tank. Look at this hump on its roof here, look. Um, it's just called an industrial top tank, and it's got this um, cheap tack, well, cheap tack ish coach um, R720, which is just basically uh, a maroon and cream coach. So, uh, I'll, uh, I'll go and get this um, all laid onto the computer now and I'll edit it together then I'll come back up, clear the layout and get this one on the go so just hang about a bit RS49 it is there we go there she is uh, 
top tank originally would have been clockwork again I've uh, put a uh, motorized chassis in it and the coach now the coach is R720 um, which actually I don't have now before you moan at me uh, I have actually tried to get hold of it a couple of times uh, on eBay and the, you don't see them very often they seem to be quite rare well I say rare that I mean they're so t cheap tack anyway they don't really fetch any money but the ones I have seen have always been scruffy so I put this one on it's the right type of coach but it's a better quality version um, I'm not sure of the triangle number I found of this one with the uh, sort of orange and cream um, painting you know livery whatever so anyway look it's a real simple one so we'll just take around a couple of times and crack on to the next bit Whoop. there was no decals on the side of this one um, not sure if that's right or wrong to be honest with you she runs well good little runner and it looks the part yep that's how RS49 used to look Back to the front. Here she is. Right. Next one coming up. I'm pretty sure actually that uh, I know what RS50 is. Um, yeah, I was right. It is. It's the Defender. Oh yeah, I love this one. So here we go. RS50. Then the Defender. You've got the uh, the green. Um, 060 uh, you know 08 on two which we've seen before once uh, but now we see for the first time uh, the exploding wagon here the red one and we see the uh, four rocket launcher here NATO and that one this is all new uh, apart from the loco and uh, yeah and here we see the searchlight wagon again NATO so um, I'll put this together I've got that in a box somewhere I'm not sure where that to exploding car is I th no I think I know where it might be anyway I'll go and put that together and uh, we'll uh, carry on rather quickly hello yet again everybody uh, right and the reason again for saying that is this time it's the third day we're on the what, 28th today um, yeah I think that's right so um, yeah I, I decided to uh, have another break last night there was a reason um, I did get a few done as you obviously have just seen but I decided to have a little bit of a break because when it comes to doing RS50 which you could have seen in a minute I realised I hadn't serviced the uh, the um, searchlight wagon and the light didn't work and it had the old bulb in it and all that crap so I thought no, I'm going to do it I'm going to do it properly so I've now done that so here we go then RS50 coming your way righty now now I mentioned to you a bit earlier on uh, in one of the previous videos that this uh, 08 of mine this green one quite a bit newer than the uh, than the one that would have been used in the set which would have been uh, identical to the black one there on the turntable um, but it doesn't really matter I mean it's just green and okay it's got the proper ladders on it and, uh, instead of sort of plasticky ones but uh, no reason why not to use it now I'll put her on backwards it's got this stupid coupling on the back uh, the, 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 the hook always stays up in the air it's like the magnets pulling it up and this plastic bit's got some sort of with this stupid decoupling thing on it, I don't know. So I'll put it on backwards, but no big deal, is it? Right then, here it is then. All NATO, as you can see. Searchlight wagon, and I say last night I stripped it, cleaned all the pickups and everything for the for the lamp, and put the LED, the LED in it, and the the, the wire in, and uh, yeah. So I thought I'm going to do it. I'll do it properly. So that's what I did last night. And then we've got the rocket launcher again, the NATO one there. All, all that all works got a spare stash of rockets and you'll notice that we've got the antennas and the chimneys are in place on both of these yeah all sorted and then we've got the red um, exploding wagon here right now that um, I did find it <laughs> I was right I did, I did remember the box where it was so there it is an RS50 the Defender set so we'll take around a couple of times let you have a look You'll note that the search light is beautiful now, look. Perfect. Nice bluey white LED. Wide up and done my own way. Yes. Fantabby dozo. You'll note that search light will stay on. 
Right, I'm going to turn the switch off. Boom. It'll go down slowly, look. And that's got the anti flicker capacitor in place as well. So, all sorted. And once again, we'll have everything running rather soon. RS50. And 49 at the back there. Give me a couple of minutes. Well, seconds, you know what I mean. Well, we're here now with the RS51, uh, the Freightmaster. So, RS51 uh, was introduced in 1964 and contained an A1A brush diesel, that's class 31, and uh, where are we? Seven wagons. Yeah, I shan't go through the numbers, you can see them on the screen. Um, but, yeah, there it is. I'll, uh, I'm very sure I can put all this together without any problem whatsoever. This, people's, is RS51, the Freightmaster. Push A1A, class 31, here she comes. Now, I'm going to mention something to you about this because I'm um, recently uh, talking to a gentleman on um, uh, on YouTube, uh, yeah, YouTube, on my channel. We were talking via messages and he was telling me he was having trouble with the these pulling things. Um, and I will point out to you that what it is, is the fact that these do really rely a lot on the magnetesian um, for the steel with the steel track but of course we're on nickel track nowadays and it's that that one doesn't do a damn thing so you are limited really to how much you can pull with them but I must admit the freight freight master set here is is fine it pulls it fine now I don't think you've seen some of these wagons so we'll just go through them right that's the transformer load is that on right it's a bit, look a bit wobbly that's the transformer load wagon that's the first time you've seen that one then you've got, I think that's a seven plank, uh, the low seven plank. Now that's actually a DAPO one. Uh, I have got the trying one, it looks the same anyway, but it's in the bottom of the box. I don't want to pull everything out just to get at that when that one was to hand. But it's the same thing, really. Um, yeah, you've already seen the livestock uh, wagon and uh, the horse box and you've seen the milk uh, milk dairy's wagon yet and then we've got the pedigree prams that's a new one it's the first time you've seen that and then we've got uh, oh not that bloody brake van again it's this is getting as bad as the bloody damn caboose on the transcontinentals why couldn't they use different brake vans oh all right no worries okay we'll just take around the motor's buzzing away there so hey, yeah it pulls this fine i mean if i throw the control quick yes it will wheel spin but it's check it steady and it's fine so you know touch wood i'm not having much of a problem pulling this amount of items there we go once you get a roll in you know there, there isn't a problem If I stop there, if I turn the control quick, you'll see exactly what I mean. See that spinning, but it, it will go, it will go. Get her up there. We'll take her through a bit of speed now, just to show that it, uh, it can work without the magnesium. If we pull these all right, so there you have it Express Freightliner. And that's nowhere near right up either, so it's not notable for it at all. Let's stop there. Cool. Do me. Right then, I'm going to have a little bit of a break and get these down onto the computer and edit it. So you've got uh, RS49 there. And then we've got RS50, the Defender there. And then we've got RS51, the uh, Freightliner here. That's it. So, oh, not that thing. <laughs> right, won't be long. Just to be different again, I've, uh, I've started everything off. They're all running. So I'm going to do some stand-up shots of everything. Round room. <laughs> so it's like great. the defender set. Yep, cool. 
Obligably, as always. By the way, I think I've been calling the Fast 31 there the Freight Rider. Um, it's not a Freight Master, so sorry about that. I think I've just definitely said Freight Rider a couple of times. I'm trying to think of everything and do everything and watch everything. It's really hard. Remember what you're saying and look at the viewfinder, don't shake it. Try and get a decent angle. Those two going around together, I'm sure they are. Slowly descended out a bit. this one. <laughs> well, you've seen it all. Over here. Get onto my controls and bring them to a stop. There we go. That's one. Oops, a bit too quick there, John. Two. Oh, my God, the guards ran off. Ha! Ah, put it back on again. I think I cut, I cut, I cut the guards down with the camera. It's still off. Whoa! Whoa, it's still off. Oh, dear. Hang on, put it back on. Sorry about that. All right, last time round. Yeah, looking at the viewfinder, I didn't realise how close I was. Touch it with the corner of the camera. There we go, anyway. That's too fine there. So there we are then. So what have we got? That's uh, 49, RS49, RS50, and RS51. That's it. We'll move on to the next three. Well, we're nearly there, everybody. I'm just going to get the next one up. Um, where are we? Yes, it's here, RS52. And I know a lot of people like this one. Uh, this was a cracker when it first came out. Um, it was introduced in 64, the Blue Pullman obviously, DMU, and you got a parlor car and then the dummy, um, which is great. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this together and uh, get that running, and then we're going to do two more. Um, I think that's about 14 or 15 today, something like that. Um, and then this is going to bring us to the end of part six, obviously, and then there'll be one more part, part seven, to conclude everything from Pat Hammond's book one of the set so uh, just as always stay around here she is then my beautiful RS52 set original 60s one 64 as I showed you when I showed you the locos a while ago one with the crest on see on the back as well That's in great nick. Lovely set in great condition. Come on, girl. Oh, yes. She is lovely. Beautiful condition. Silver in sweet as the day she was made. And by the way, yes, so you asked me. <laughs> I have changed the wheels. Um, they reprofiled the ones for the uh, smaller wheels there. That's why she's running fine on Pico track. And I've also changed all the trailing wheels, all the buggies to the Hornby metal ones and they just run as smooth as hell like that so there you go that's the RS52 the blue Pullman set uh, another two coming up let's go and have a look back with you again Doo -doo -doo -doo. right where are we 
Okay, now there's a massive jump here look from RS52 to RS61 so like I said uh, before I will go back and check all these gaps at uh, a later date and see what's happening in those. Right, RS61 Oh yeah, Old Smokey. Oh yeah, I've forgotten about this one. Right, okay, that's the 3F Dealey. That's the uh, very rare this one. Um, the uh, green one with the red doors. Yes, it is quite rare that one. I think it was only ever made for this set. I don't think it was sold separately. Uh, and then it's got a matching 9 inch um, maroon cream coach with it as well. So yeah, um, yeah, wicked. Let's see if I can dig it out. I'm trying to think where that one might be. Although I have got a box where I keep all my uh, sort of baggage cars and utilities wagons in. So it probably is in there. I won't have a look anyway. Yeah, I was right, it was in the box with the utilities and uh, various sort of baggage type cars, whatever. So here she is, the old Smokey! Hey! You've already seen the date of the Fiat Healy in uh, one of the previous videos, probably a couple of videos back. But they are, you got the, the orange coach, that was featured in one of the videos as well. And then you got the quite rare utilities wagon like there with the red and green. Um, the roof needs to clean on this. I've not actually cleaned it since I got it. You want a bit of a, a scrub up, but uh, wait, this looks all right. Yeah, fine. Old Smokey, cool. Right, what did I say it was? Um, 61, I think. RS61. Yes, because there was, there was the big gap. So let's just take around again. Come on, then. Oh, I will when she moves. Why is she not moving? Hang on. Ah, naughty. Don't do that to me. I wonder how many of you out there pushed the train to get it going. <laughs> yeah, cool. Come on, old Smokey. Talking about Smokey, I'm sorry I have not been able to show you the Triumph Smoke Unit working. I've taken out of most of them and I haven't stumbled across a loco yet that's got one in. Uh, it, was one, it will happen at some point. It will happen. Oh, I might go around again. Come on. I wanted to stop a bit earlier than that, really. Oh, good old Smokey. Okay, uh, right, we're on the last one, so uh, let's go and check it out and uh, wind this all up now. Okay, here we go. It was RS61, so we'll go back there and we've got one more today. Now, <laughs> let's have a look how many we've done. Hang on. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I didn't do that one, so that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Well, we started off uh, with a bang with the beautiful Davy Crockett, so let's go out with a bang. I know there's quite a few of you out there who've been saying to me, looking forward to this one, R62. The Carabelle set. <laughs> I know some of you wanted this one running, and uh, yeah, there it is. And uh, yeah, fine. I've put it all out, all out ready. So let me just go and get it, get it going. That's all we can do. Just get it going. And so here it is. The last one for today, or for, for part six, I should say. It's been three days. This has. Here she comes. The Carabelle set. Oh yeah, I know there's loads of you out there wanted to see this one, so there we are. There's no point in giving any introduction to the Jinty because you've seen it quite a few times. And then we've got the two tier wags. Uh, and I think if you've seen my video, the longest car transport tra tra longest longest car transport train on YouTube, hopefully, it still is I think anyway, um, I've glued all my cars down. Uh, so um, I don't like them falling all over the place. So two, two of the tear wags. Hey, get a load of this, guys. I mean, come on, get a load of this. Look. Oh, look. It's the long wheelbase brake van. Array, 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 array. It's actually. Oh, I can't believe they've used a different brake van on this. Perfect. That's the long wheelbase one. So, oh, brilliant. So sick of seeing that short one. Right, let's just get around. couple of drive-bys bloody brilliant how he says it himself right we'll stop there 
cups. I need to go and get a cup of tea because I'm gagging. <coughs> I've got a bit of a tickle. So I'll go and get a cup of tea and then we'll run the final three. So won't be too long. Right chaps, we're on the off. We're on the homeward run. Let's do it. One. Two. Three. Get some good shots of it all now, please. Looks cool on the viewfinder guys. Looks really good guys. So what we got here, Pullman is uh, RS52 and then we've got RS61 with old Smokey which is coming here and then last up RS62 with the Carabell Bloody wicked <laughs> Loving it, loving it Couple more shots then down the room. All right, there you have it. I'm going to paint this one now and just uh, tell you a little bit more about the uh, number seven, which will be coming up next one and the last one. Ooh, well there you have it everybody I'm bloody shattered now that's been three non-stop days uh, apart from uh, I had a bit of a rest last night but then I was still working on the uh, NATO stuff to service it all but whatever it's done now um, yeah so that's the end of part six um, I hope you enjoyed it I mean I think it's been a bit of a cracker we've seen a lot of new stuff and a lot of great classic stuff there as well in this part in fact we have on all the parts but you know this one just seems to have that little extra special edge about it um, obviously the next one will be seven I've got two more sets to do from here look which is there and there and then it's going to feature some, hang on, is that in the screen on the camera can you see that on the camera uh, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm looking at actually no I don't think you can. oh yeah you can you can see that one going here yeah, there's that one and there's another one a bit further down anyway uh, so we'll, we'll get those on to part seven and then you're going to see other things as well like um, primary sets like these here like the primary sets so let's go back on that um, although we've done a couple of those you're going to see other sets like the um, rocket is it uh, that one there yeah the rocket set there look so we'll be showing you that one and um, yeah loads of others as well so you know looking forward to doing it oh yeah some will tell you what, what else I'll show you um, let me just go back actually rather rather strange because it's not listed under the sets and I think it should have been but that's just my personal opinion because here look you've got this Strike Force 10 set from Battle Space there and uh, obviously I'll do that one and um, we've also got this satellite train here which I can do that one as well um, and my gut feeling is the last one's going to be about 12 to maybe 14 again to bring us to the end of the whole of uh, Pat Hammond's book number one so uh, yeah 
I think that sums it up nicely. Thanks again a million for watching and I really hope you enjoy it. Um, I suppose you could say it's my little Christmas present to you all out there. Um, and who knows, number seven, well, I might be able to do it over the uh, on the New Year, of a sort of a, a New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, blah, blah, blah. So we'll see how it all pans out and uh, how I am for time. So take good care of yourselves, everybody. Thanks again for everything. Good night, God bless. See you, bye.